right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our November Planning Commission meeting. Uh, if you'll stand with me as we do the pledge, and we'll also have an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Father, we come before you tonight asking that you give us wisdom as we make decisions on behalf of Springdale, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to have these people here with us tonight, Lord, to hear their concerns and look over the opportunities before this city. We ask you to be with the president, his staff, Lord, with all of our military men and women across the country, Lord, and those outside the country, and also with our mayor and his staff. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, thank you guys for joining us for our, our November Planning Commission meeting. I'll call this meeting to order. We can do roll call. Howard Austin, Here. Gary Compton, Here. Roy Covert, Here. James David, Shannon Mueller, Peyton Parker, Here. Kevin Parsley, Here. Ben Peters, Dale Tyler. I think Howard just joined. Howard, can you hear us? Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right, great deal. Uh, October minutes. Any questions, comments? Motion to approve. A motion by Mr. Cover. Second by Mr. Mueller. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> All right. Um, before we get into the next section, there is a couple of tabled items that we will not uh, hear this evening. Uh, the first one is L21 33, Berryfield Apartments, Phase 2. Uh, that's been tabled for staff. Suzuki uh, Baldazar, this is a conditional use, C21-30, that's been tabled for staff. Karina chavez Overa, that's been tabled for staff, 21-31. Jacqueline Gerdner, this is another conditional use, 21-33, that's tabled for staff. Uh, Bart Scale, Taco Bell, L21-37, that's been tabled for staff. Um, and then we have some variants is that have been tabled B21-92, Ava Calderon Mendez, uh, and then Karina Chavez Olvera, uh, B21-95. Those are all tabled items that we will not hear this evening. And with that, um, I will start. Uh, we have a proposed amendment to the Springdale Code of Ordinance, Chapter 32, Downtown District Form-Based Code, to amend Section 2.1, Regulating Plan to Revise the Boundary of Campus Type 1 and Neighborhood Center Type 2. Can you guys move the, okay, there we go. You can see there's a small uh, piece of property located at the corner of Deaver Street and West Maple Avenue that was included as part of the C1 Campus One Zone in the area around the uh, hospital. And at this time, it is being uh, asked to remove that from that Campus One and move to a neighborhood center type two. Uh, this will allow for construction of a new uh, facility at that corner that's not related with the hospital or any of that campus and staff would recommend that we amend the form-based code regulatory plan to make this change in the uh, district boundaries. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? This would be a motion to recommend it to council for approval. Motion to recommend for approval. Motion by Mr. Parker. I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Covert. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Mueller. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Proposed amendment passes 7 0. Did you call James David because he's online now too? Oh, is, I'm so sorry. James David? Yes. I'm sorry. And this passes 8 0. All right, uh, next item, Springdale Planning Commission 2022 schedule of meeting dates and submission deadlines presented by Patsy Christie. Believe it or not, it's time to start talking about what we're going to do in 2022. And I don't know what happened to 2021, but we're moving ahead. Uh, it is the custom that we establish the deadlines for submission of everything to the Planning Commission and the meeting dates. Uh, it's pretty much the same timing as we've always had when the applications are due, when the meetings are held. The meeting is the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, things that are moved forward from that meeting to that needs council action 
rezonings, those thing, kinds of things go to the fourth Tuesday of the month for city council. Replats and final plats go to city council on the second one. And then the resubmission deadlines and the uh, resubmission deadlines, we ask that the planning commission adopt this so we can publish it as the submission deadlines for next year. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission, we have a motion. Motion to approve commission 22 schedule as stated. Motion by Mr. Covert. Have a second. Second. Second by Ms. Mueller. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. This passes 8 0. And next section is tabled items L21 32, Ask Park Building C, modification of L20 06, 350 East Robinson Avenue. Also have a variance B21 91, variance for commercial design standards for landscaping and paving requirements presented by Bates and Associates and Greg Edwards. And I forgot to tell you guys this uh, when it's your turn, uh, if you'll go up to the mic up there, that's a little different than obviously our, our um, other uh, facilities that we had. But uh, yes, go ahead. I'm Jeff Bates with Bates and Associates. Uh, this is a modification, I guess, to the original approved large scale. And they want to add a storage yard that they're storing pipe materials on. And they do have a couple of variances they're asking for, for the gravel yard and the landscaping. And what makes this unique is it's pretty much surrounded by existing commercial buildings. And it's several hundred feet from the public right away. You can't really see it. Staff comment. It's going to be nice. uh, there are several uh, standard comments that have been sent to the applicant, but uh, we've also got outdoor storage not allowed on gravel for which a variance has been requested. Uh, parking lot landscaping improvement or landscaping is required for which a variance has been requested. And finally, a uh, lighting and photometric plan is required. Rick, you're gonna to have to get closer to the mic because I can't hear you. Is that mic turned on? Okay, you're gonna to have to get closer. No, you're fine. Go ahead. And the only comment from engineering is that swales and open drainage ditches shall be sodded for velocities less than three foot per second. And when velocities exceed three foot per second, concrete lining is required. But we need some justification for the B stone that is proposed in the channel as opposed to sod or concrete. So if you want to address those, why do we need the outdoor storage to be on gravel rather than being paved as required by the ordinance? Well, our tenant asked for a, a uh, gravel parking lot. That's what they asked for, and that's what we told them we would give them. Uh, there is really no reason to pave it. They are We're fencing it with an eight-foot privacy fence. Uh, it's a privacy screen fence all the way around it. There is lighting on all of the buildings. It's lit up over there like a Christmas tree at night. Uh, you can't, I mean, there's lighting on all of the buildings to the, uh, I guess, to the east, to the west, and to the, uh, I guess it would be to the south. The only lighting that you would not, and there's actually lighting on the, well, you see the building to the west, uh, both buildings to the west, and, or one building to the west, one building to the, two buildings to the east. And then there's a building directly to the south that lights the, I mean, it's lit up. You can see in there really well. And uh, that's why we did it. And there's landscaping all around the pond and landscaping down uh, the backside of Napa, which is the building to the south. So do you own all the buildings that surround this? We own all the buildings that surround it, including the pond. Okay. Can you, or Jeff, can you do a lighting plan that shows us what the candle, but is on that based on the lighting that's already there? We can. Okay, so you need to submit that lighting plan. Anything else? Nope, this one's okay. up to you guys. Any questions or comments from the audience? We have, you're already storing stuff out there, right? Uh, yeah, we have a temporary fence up right now. Our tenant asked us, we paid to put a temporary fence up so that they could store some stuff. Uh, we're actually, waiting on this approval to put up the privacy fence. 
Yeah, that's the only thing that, I mean, they've got that out there right now. We'll start the privacy fence tomorrow. With, I think all the materials are in for it. We'll start it immediately. Jeff, what about the engineering's question about it being not solid as well? It was more of a maintenance issue, just having that grass in between the two areas. And uh, we just felt like it looked a lot better with the shot rock. And it works really well. We've had several rains since then. And it doesn't hold any water. There's no erosion whatsoever. Uh, it works really well the way it is. Any questions or comments? To the commission. So the variances they're asking for is to allow the outdoor storage to remain on gravel for there to be no parking lot landscaping and no perimeter landscaping, but they will fence it with a privacy fence around it and they will address the lighting plan. Is there something I'm missing? Okay. Those are what the variances are. And the landscaping is just for the proximity that's in yellow. Well, the actual lot itself where the storage is going on there, there's no landscaping for the building to the west either, is there? There's yes, no there, is, uh, there is landscaping on the back of the building to the south, and there is landscaping all around the building to the west. It's just in islands out in front of the building. Okay. That's just an old picture. There's actually yeah, that's an old picture there. there. There's a building sitting there where the 350 is. Yeah. And then what kind of landscaping is there on the pond on that side of the pond? Uh, there's trees on the back side, trees on and sod all down or sod all down the left hand side. And there's grass growing on the right hand side it, where it splits there where the ditch goes down. Okay. It's all landscape there. You're saying there's landscaping on the north side of the pond, but nothing on the south side? Uh, the north side. No, there's some on the there's some on the south side also. There's trees along the south side also. Okay. Then there's a windmill set up for aerating the pond on the uh, I guess it would be on and some solar panels. I guess the windmill would be set up on the southeast side of the pond. We have a tenant in one of the buildings that does uh, outdoor water solutions, and that's what they use the pond for testing fountains, solar fountains. Any questions or comments from the commission? Did I understand you correctly that you're doing an eight foot privacy fence? Yes, sir. So the, the houses on Crutcher will not see into the back. You won't be correct? able to see into the back of any of it. It's all eight foot wood privacy fence. This be a call for the vote for the variances. We can do them together or separate, however you guys want to do that. I'm fine with them together unless anyone else in the commission has a problem with them being together. Okay. Do I have a call for a vote? Call for the vote. Call for a vote by Mr. Cover. Cover. Yes. David. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Arsley. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Variance is passed 8 0. Uh, motion and a second for large scale. Subject to staff comment. Motion to approve large scale subject to staff comments. And second by Ms. Mueller. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert. Yes. Large scale passes 8 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next table item B21 88, Sam's Real Estate Business Trust, Andy's Frozen Custards, west side of I 49, south of Sunset Avenue, variance for commercial design standards, building foundation landscape presented by Anderson Engineering. My name is uh, Kip Williams with Anderson Engineering. Um, we're doing variance from foundation landscaping uh, requirement for the Landscaping at the entryway into the building. Um, Andy's is unique that uh, all the customers are outside on the patio and sidewalk, and that we provided the ornamental plantings and shrubs outside 
around the patio area instead of the entryway since there is no entryway into the building for customers. And you will note that their variance request for the distance between driveways went away and they combined it into one drive. And I think they've, they've done a really good job of addressing the concerns that we had last time. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So the percentage of landscaping is still constant. It's just that it's right. reallocated. It, they've got the same amount. It's just in different locations. Yeah, great. Right. Yeah. Well, and yes, thank you guys for working on the driveway piece. That just yeah. makes a lot more sense to do it the way you guys did here. So any questions or comments from the audience? Or are you just anxious to get an Andy's frozen custard? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, to the commission. Be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Dr. Compton. Mueller. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Variance passes 8-0. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, let's see, next item, uh, we've got uh, rezoning. R21-56, uh, I'm gonna get the last name wrong, I'm, I'm sure on this one, Billy Tadios, and uh, 2717 East Emma Avenue, A1 to a P P1, presented by Earth Plan Designs Alternatives. Um, we're requesting a P1 use for yeah. a church. Can, can you state your name? For the Sarah Gertz with EDA. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. So the property to the north is on P1 right now. Right now it's A1 and we're requ requesting that uh, P1 for a church use on that property. Staff comment. The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates commercial use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Uses that commonly have moderate to large scale assemblies of people such as churches, funeral homes, member, Ship organizations and other institutions should be appropriately located on adequate sized parcels and with sufficient space to accommodate the off street parking and accessory needs. Such uses should be located so as to <clears throat> minimize any adverse or undue significant burden on adjacent or adjoining land uses, as well as that portion of the street system. And you, you have a revised map that's, that's laying on the table that wasn't in your uh, packet we didn't have all of the property that is part to be in rezoned but Sarah this is the entire track they want to rezone correct yes ma'am okay okay any questions or comments from the audience to the commission call for the vote call for the vote by Mr. Covert Parker yes Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Rezoning passes 8 0. Staff will prepare the uh, ordinance and it goes to council on the 23rd. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item R21 57 City Point Church, parking lot south of 803 Quant Avenue from SF2 to 01. Uh, also, conditional use. Uh, unit 42, churches and synagogues in a C2 at 803 Quant Avenue, presented by James Baker. I am James Baker, and what you said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Staff comments? Well, this is kind of a unique situation because this lot is contained in that residential subdivision, and sometime over the years it was converted to a parking lot. I'm not sure that we even know how or when that happened. But to rezone the property to 01, a parking lot is an allowed use in an 01 zone, which still allows for single family in that uh, commercial or in that uh, residential subdivision. So the recommendation is to rezone to 01. The, it is in keeping with the following goals and policies and is recommended for approval, encourage the development of office and professional uses that provide a transition between residential areas and more intense uses with reasonably with reasonable building height limitations and adequate buffering and landscaping to ensure compatibility. How is it off of that avenue and not the street? Because it's actually attached to the property to the north. Okay. 
because that has been the parking lot for that building for several many years. And so it just, it doesn't have a separate address. Okay. That's why it has the same, the same address. I just wanna make sure we yeah. address that on the phone. Okay. Yeah. Any questions or comments from the audience? Yes, sir. If you'll go up to the mic and state your name and address, please, for the record. My name is Robert I need you to go to the mic. Right. Sorry, it's being recorded and it won't pick it up unless we have it at the mic. I know you got a loud voice, but. <laughs> my name is Robert Taylor and I live at 708 Young Street. My property adjoins that property and I say, let them have it. So. We're more than what we welcome them. I don't so. think I have any questions for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? You'll have to answer to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's to the commission. Up for the vote. Uh, let's see. We need to do the conditional use first. Uh, let's do the rezoning, rezoning first. first. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so we have a call for the vote by Mr. Covert on the rezoning. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Parker? Yes. Rezoning passes 8 0. Uh, uh, staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to council on the 23rd. Now, the conditional use will be for this lot and the existing structure for a church to be used as a use unit 42. The ingress and egress is uh, acceptable. The off-street parking and loading is acceptable. They have an off-street parking agreement with the property to the east to provide the additional spaces they need on the times that they're having services. Um, the refuge is acceptable. The utilities are acceptable. The screening is not applicable. Their sign is acceptable. My understanding, you're only going to have signage on the building itself. Yes. No freestanding signs. Uh, the yard requirements is acceptable. The only condition that would be, I mean, the, the conditional use is acceptable with the condition that any modifications to the building is outlined by building and fire departments, and they have to be in compliant with all adopted code ordinances, which also includes the noise ordinance. Yes. Okay. Does that require any uh, defining of op hours of operation? Um, did you tell us your hours of operation? Yes. It, what, are you talking about the dentist that's just to the east that's allowing us to use his lot for any overflow? No. What time will the church operate? Oh, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and then all day on Sunday. Anything else? All right, any questions or comments on the use, conditional use? <laughs> to the commission. I'm sorry. Just a quick question. Danny here at Springfield Police. I heard a Monday through Friday, nine to five on Sunday all day. Can we just get a clarification? Uh, the clarification on all day? Yeah. Uh, well, we will be meeting there for morning services Many times we will have different activities through Sunday afternoon. And then most of the time we will have an evening Sunday service. So it will occupy most of that day. And some of that may include serving lunch or meetings of different groups or not all the church at one time during the week. No, we have a small group ministry and a youth group ministry that will be using the building at those different times. There'll be just one main gathering on Sunday mornings, but other than that, it'll be smaller groups. So nine to nine type of operation, probably. Yeah, that would be fair. Um, it'll go in. Are you talking about Monday through Friday? Sunday. On Sunday, I, it probably will start a little bit sooner. Okay. Um, uh, the service won't start until 10, 15. Uh, and the evening service may be at six or seven. Uh, but that won't be for a large group. That'll be for a smaller group on the evening. Yeah, it's just getting a little bit more clarity instead of just saying all day. I mean, is it 8 to, to eight to eight a.m. to 9 p.m.? There you go. Okay. Okay. To the commission. Call for the vote. Yep. Call for the vote by Mrs. Mueller. 
Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Additional use passes 8 0. Seth will prepare the resolution. He goes to council on the 23rd as well. Uh, next section is the uh, preliminary plats, replats final. We have the first one, replat 21 10, Westfield Subdivision, Elm Springs Road, west of Gutensong, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, we're modifying some lot lines um, on this Westfield subdivision um, just to the west of White Road, as you can see there. Uh, I'll answer any questions. You're reducing the number of lots, correct? Yeah, I went five to four. Okay. Any other staff comments? Um, so what we've got is please provide articles. I can't hear you. Should be on. Even the mic don't send me along well. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, please provide articles of incorporation for Arkansas Customs LLC displaying who the authorized representatives are for those entities. Uh, last update was that we'd be getting those from you guys in the lead up to this meeting. And other than that, uh, given this is a commercial subdivision approved after January 1st of 2002, any development will uh, be a non-large scale development. And I think that we got submitted today the warranty deed. It is no longer owned by Arkansas Customs Incorporated. So we have the new warranty deed. So okay. we don't need that anymore. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? That's it? No. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? Mm -hmm. To the commission? This be a recommendation, right? Recommendation to approve. Yeah. It's a motion, motion. subject to staff comments. Motion subject to staff comments. Sorry. I have a motion by Mr. Covert. Second by Ms. Mueller. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. It passes 8 0. If you want this to go to council next Tuesday evening, the ordinance needs to be in our office by 5 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> so they can get on the, because the new cutout, cutoff time is noon on Thursday to get on the agenda for next week. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next replat 21 11, lot 143, Apple Orchard Subdivision, 2700 East Robinson Avenue, presented by Bates and Associates. Max Richards with Bates and Associates Land Surveying. Um, our clients have a 4.47 acre parcel uh, along Robinson Avenue, and they want to split it into 1.5 acres and 2.97 acres. I believe the landowners are also here to answer questions if you have any. Staff comments? Uh, we don't have anything beyond just standard comments. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? The motion. Motion by Mrs. Mueller. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Cover. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Passes 8-0. You want this to go on next Tuesday evening's council agenda? The ordinance needs to be in our office by 5 o'clock tomorrow. Next item, uh, preliminary plat 21-16, Hackberry Woods, 3357 Haberton Road, presented by Expedient Civil Engineer. <coughs> Jason Ingles with Expedient <coughs> Civil Engineering. Looking at a 10 acre tract, uh, part of the property is encompassed by floodplain, so we're only able to develop a portion of it. We're looking to plat, preliminary plat 28 lots. Uh, with that, I'll answer any questions that you have. 
staff comments? Uh, only thing that we have is on page three in the table displaying R3-SF uh, lot standards. Please replace all instances of R3-SF with just merely SF3. And I understand a lot of these engineering comments are going to be addressed when the construction set comes. So there's quite a few, but mm -hmm. the sidewalk adjacent to the parking lane should be six foot wide. Landscape islands are needed in the parking lane. Landscape island should be 14 by eight feet centered on lot lines, maximum spacing 200 to 250 feet. One tree required per island. Please provide a signage plan. Place streetlights in the green space on the side of the street that doesn't have the parking lane. Remove the parking lane from the street on the north side of lot seven near the cul-de-sac. And revise the Haberton street section. It doesn't look correct on the section north of Sugarberry. They show the street section for Haberton and include the street sections for the internal street. Um, finished floor elevations for the lots adjacent to the pond should be two foot above the 100 year water surface elevation. And um, on lot four, it looks a little low. Add note that lot eight should be dedicated as a drainage easement. That's where the pond is. And provide a lot grading plan and a storm sewer plan. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission. With, uh, I have a question. This is Peyton. Um, just lot seven. Is that a buildable lot? Wilson, you want to answer that? Give me just a minute. I'm looking at my plan. It just from the shape of it, I'm just curious how you, if you can actually fit anything on that. It, it's, it would be difficult, but yeah, we're looking at lot, lot seven as a, as a buildable lot. So that's gonna have two frontage on it. Three. Three frontages. You got 30 feet on three sides. Mm -hmm. And eight on the back. We we may come back and ask for a variance on that later when we get the file flat. But yeah. I would suggest you come up, look at your building plan and see if you fit something on there. Yes, ma'am. So when you remove the parking lane from that, you will get a little bit of room. I don't know if it'll be enough for you. Okay. That was my only question. Thanks. Thank you. I can see that one coming back in the future as far as multiple frontage on it. So. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the, the planning commission? This be a motion. Motion to approve subject staff comments. Motion by Mr. Cover. Second by Mrs. Mueller. Cover. Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Passes 8 0. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next section large scale developments L21 24 PSD soccer indoor revised. East of Highway 264 and north of Highway 412. Also have a couple of variants for commercial design standards B21-77. Facades and exterior walls. Detail features, materials and colors, perimeter and foundation landscaping. Presented by Harrison French and Associates. Thank you. Um, I'm Rick McGraw with Harrison French and Associates representing the project. And we're looking at doing a indoor soccer project here on about 4.9 acres of land just north of 412 and Old Missouri intersection. Um, we've worked diligently with staff over the last couple of months to kind of get this to work, primarily increasing the parking um, to meet the city code for that. Um, in addition, there are a handful of <clears throat> building facade variances that we're requesting. Um, primarily, it have to do with, um, I guess it's a pre-engineered metal building, and so we're trying to um, make the best out of that as we can while still meeting the design code. So um, with that being said, I think my architect is here somewhere. She could speak to the building variances should any questions arise, but um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, staff comments? 
I want to start by saying we appreciate y'all working with this because the parking was a major concern and the developer has purchased that additional property to the east to provide the, uh, the additional parking that's needed to meet this the requirement. Pending the approval of the LSD, yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh -huh. <clears throat> and, and, and that makes a major difference because if this facility works as well as they think it will and have a lot of tournaments, parking is going to be a concern at that location. Uh, go ahead, Rick, sorry. Upon completion of the corresponding informal plat being used as the instrument to adjust lot lines, the cover page will need to remove parent tract 815-28634-000 and replace parent tract parcel number 815-28632-000 and its legal description to display the updated parcel numbers and legal descriptions. Um, we need to uh, adjust the or I'm sorry, need to identify zoning of the property and adjustments will need to be made to the plan set on several pages to reflect the completion of the informal plat. Um, all drives and parking areas are required to be paved. Um, that is one of the variances that has been requested. Uh, perimeter landscaping is required. That is a variance that has been requested. Foundation landscaping is required. A variance has been requested for foundation landscaping. Uh, central features and community spaces shall have direct access to the public sidewalk. That's a standard comment. Walk pro or, I'm sorry, wall projections or recesses must be a minimum of three feet in depth. There's a variance requested for that. And then building facades shall include a repeating pattern with no less than three of the following color change, texture change, ma material module change. Uh, expressions of architectural or structural bay through a change in plane no less than 12 in, uh, inches in width, uh, such as an offset reveal or projecting rib. At least one element must repeat horizontally and no element shall repeat at intervals of greater than 30 inches, or I'm sorry, feet horizontally or vertically. Variance has been requested. And uh, predominant exterior building materials shall be at high quality materials, including without limitation, the following brick, native or natural stone, synthetic stone, concrete, masonry units, uh, synthetic stucco or ephus, architectural precast concrete, decorative face, concrete tilt up panels, glass, wood, natural or composite. And that is um, the last variance requested. Only engineering comment I have is that for that new detention pond for the new parking lot in the back, um, please tie the outlet directly into the existing 18 inch RCP on the property and then submit your grade and come package. You want to show that we'll, uh, they have a little video of what the building's going to look like and then we'll get into the details of this in just a second. I saw it. Is it going to work? We hope. Okay. Are they seeing that online? No, apparently not. Yeah, yeah we, we are. are. We are. Okay. Okay, we're gonna try it again. Oh, you lost it. Where'd it no, go? No, we lost it. I'm sorry, guys. Can you try it again? Uh, no, I I was I took it out of the PowerPoint in order to allow the PowerPoint to work at its normal speed. So, okay, so the two yeah. won't work together. No. Okay, so let's go I back can to go the... into the um, the back parking lot as well as the uh, elevations of the building. Okay, uh, is the architect? You said the architect here. I don't see her. There she is. Okay, let's let's go to the pictures and talk about what you have done to the facade so that we know the materials and what it's going to look yeah. like. Can you just go to those? Wait a minute, Steve. Can you make it work? Let's let's keep going and okay. while they get that yeah. teed up. On. So uh, while the uh, <clears throat> requirements, can you go to the next? Slide? Lost my my voice a little bit. Uh, so the requirements are of primary materials to be of glass, masonry, and other quality materials. We're using um, primarily metal metal building panel, simply because metal building is what is needed to house a soccer field. So we've used um, masonry wherever possible, and we've. Okay. Put together you, you a collection of so okay. okay a collection of yeah. um different colors of metal panel to give it some interest and some texture um <clears throat> while we don't meet the excuse me the 12 inch depth requirement we do meet an eight inch depth requirement every 30 feet as required so we're very close on that one and the only facade that doesn't have a 
a variation of at least three materials is the east facade, which faces a stand of trees and is not facing a public way. What, what's the material that we're looking at by the door? It's a metal panel. We did a variety of colors and uh, kind of put them together in, in sort of a mosaic pattern to give it some interest and some unique quality. So when you walk inside, there's two full-size soccer fields. Mm -hmm. And they did ask window, add windows on both the south and the west side. Uh, the north and the south side, as oh, well okay. as the west. So we've got windows on three sides. We do not have windows on the, the east facade, which is the side where we've got the uh, ground mounted units and it faces a stand of trees beyond the property and the, uh, the, the junkyard beyond. Body shop, excuse me. You do have the capability of opening up some facilities above the concession stand with offices or something in the future. You're just not doing it right now. Correct. We could do that in the future. Okay. Uh, one of the, the potential interior changes before we submit to a uh, permit would be a small party room so that kids could have their birthdays there. Okay. They could, you know, have mom bring in some pizza and they could play soccer for okay. fun on their birthday. Okay. Now the, the base material, can you go back now to the the uh, pictures, I mean, the base <clears throat> material on the front is split face block. Okay. And it continues around to the side of the building for a portion and then skips a few panels and then starts it back up again just for kind of some rhythmic purposes. I, and I can tell you, we have worked with the developer and the engineer and architect quite a bit on this project. I mean, we're we're looking at a metal building for a soccer field, but we've done a lot of changes to it. And I think, I appreciate all the work they put into it, trying to address the concerns that we've had from the very beginning to make this facility work as an indoor soccer facility. So we can answer any questions if anybody's got anything. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission. Can, um, can someone share a little bit more about um, how people are going to get from the parking lot to the facility and sidewalks and that kind of thing? Okay, let's go back to the, you'll see there is a sidewalk. This is the parking lot that's to the east of the, of the site, a little bit northeast of it. They are proposing a sidewalk that comes out of that parking lot on the north side of that drive and goes all the way over to the front of the, of the building right across over there and then it crosses over and ties into the building so that everybody comes back into the front to go in, correct? So, so there's, that's the only um, kind of, or, or I'm, no, I don't wanna say only, cause that may sound bad. The, the designated point for people to cross that uh, driveway is right here in front of the building. They'd have a sidewalk all the way up the north side of that driveway and then they'd be able, there'd be a crossing there for them, right? That's right. correct. Okay, great. Now, what they don't have along that side is any landscaping along that sidewalk. And is that because there's not enough room between the edge of the property and the curve to get the sidewalk in there and meet the requirements for that drive to have a two-way drive to go to the back? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then the amount of, of landscaping that would be required along that has been incorporated in other areas on the site. That is correct. So basically we're getting the same amount of landscaping. It's just being put in other areas along the front of the building, along the side on the south side, nothing on the north side, and then scattered throughout the side itself. Right. I'm, I know this this may be picky, but but the landscaping that's from the rendering that's on the um, perimeter landscaping that's on the west side, so the front of the building, it just looked like the plant, uh, what are, what's the plant choice there? It just seems small given the massive size of that building and there's no windows on the lower, um, on, on the, on the lower half. And so I'm just wondering if the landscaping choice there could be such that maybe those bushes or trees or whatever are taller, the shrubs are to kind of help with making, you know, with maybe softening that huge building. Is that, something we could do 
Yeah, and I think the video is a little bit misleading on in terms of the plannings at the front of the building. It's just more to show that there are plannings on the planning plan. We do have a variety of planning pallets that are there from large parking lot trees um, up to a taller, medium height shrubs all the way down to ground cover. So we're providing a variety of height variation along the front, the front facade there. Okay, very good. Thank you. Oh, you put me on the spot. Uh, I can if you give me one second to pull my plan up. Yeah, it looks like boxwood, which would all be the same size if you look at what's on. That's that's your question, right, Peyton? Yeah, if, if yeah, that is. Boxwood yeah. along the front. Can there be some variety of something taller to break up that wall through there? Yes, that's not an issue. Okay. Um, the parking um, with the additional lot. What does that get you to the um, the number based on this size building? I believe we hit it square. 214 is what we required, and I believe we provided 214 on the dot. And that's based on our chart of using this facility for soccer fields and the area that they have for offices and concession stands. We went through those calculations pretty carefully to make sure that we knew what was the number that was required. Well, my reason for asking that is, is that uh, I suspect that they'll probably have vendors that come and want to set up as far as tent locations and things like that, given that you're at right at the parking requirements. I don't know that that would be possible in the lots. I don't think there's any intent for vendors to show up to do that. It's, it's a, the sole purpose of this is for it to have recreational adult league soccer and in, in the off event of kids events there. There is no- All, I, I all within, inside the building. That right? is correct. Okay. Inside the building. okay. No outdoor activities are planned for this. I just wanna make sure that that's understood in, in that because you, you don't have the capacity. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, I agree with Kevin. I think it's a good layout. I would, I would, something for the future to think about when you do decide to put offices on the inside, it will no longer meet those parking requirements, right? When you start dropping offices into it. So no, they calculated, they calculated office spaces and concession spaces and the, the area at the top, All if it was maxed out. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. We, we made sure that everything was covered when we were calculating parking <laughs> spaces because Parking could be an issue. We hope that parking is an issue at this location. Yeah, it, 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 parking was the biggest piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. for this. And after much um, coordination with staff and uh, the owner and the adjacent property owners, we were able to mm -hmm. come up with what you see here. So it was, it was. Great. Well, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for getting in there. Absolutely. We have spent quite a bit of time trying to get this one all together to make it work and to fit on the site and meet the requirements. And uh, I think it really meets a need of something in Springdale. There's not any major indoor soccer facilities anywhere so yeah any other questions or comments from the commission Would this be a call for the vote for the variances we can take them individual or all together i prefer all together unless there's any reason to do them separately yeah okay all. do i have a call for the vote call for the vote call for the vote by mr covert david Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Variance is passed 8 0. Uh, do I have a motion on large scale? Subject to staff comments with the change in the foundation landscaping along the front. Okay. Motion by Mr. Mueller. Second. Second by Mr. Cover. Mueller. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Large scale passes 8 0. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Next item L21 28. Carpet One, thirty five sixty Wagon Wheel Road, B twenty one ninety four variants of commercial design standards, the entrance, pedestrian flow, central features and community space, facades, exterior walls, material colors, and landscaping presented by Blue and Associates. Good to go. Yep. Okay. Go George DeCane with Balloon Associates. Uh, this is the Carpet One, it's an extension to the uh, original building. There is an existing structure on this uh, site. It, the existing structure faces on Wagon Wheel Road. However, the new structure should be back behind it. Um, it's mainly going to be used for uh, storage of carpets uh, to kind of increase capacity of the site. 
Um, as you can see here, you can see the existing building. Uh, we are actually extending it to the north of the existing building. The new structure, uh, as you can see on the site plan, has uh, access. It'll have uh, street level or it'll have floor level truck access for the pickup trucks. And then it'll also have semi access for the for bigger trucks to come in and kind of kind of do what they need to do. Uh, the area that you see there near the top of the page, those are for uh, dumpster locations. Um, the idea being that the dumpster would be on the, basically on the outside, skip a space, and then on the two middle ones. That way, the, uh, the gentlemen that are unloading the vehicles can just pull into one of those spaces and fill in the dump trucks on either side, or fill in the dumpsters on either side and actually kind of be able to keep it contained into a specific area. Uh, there is a fire access road. If you notice there on the left-hand bottom, that fire access road was included. Uh, Mr. Stith and the, uh, the building department let us know that that would be required for access around the buildings. That's the only reason that is there is for fire access. Uh, I believe we are going to have it gated so that it's not being used for anything else except for the fire department to be able to get in and out and kind of you know protect the building from that location. We are asking for a couple of variances on this site. Um, some of the variants have to do with trying to keep the same look of the original building uh, with the, uh, the gray that it's got and kind of different elements of that. There are also, um, as you can tell, with all the pavement that we have up against the building, foundation landscaping around that face of the building was not going to be uh, possible. So we have taken the foundation landscaping that we would have had and distributed it in other locations on the site and also added a few additional trees to help screen the residential area to the north or in this orientation to the left uh, from being able to see our building. Our building itself is actually uh, on the backside is going to be buried into the ground about eight feet. So we will have a uh, waterproof wall um, along the the uh along that section so as to help lower the building into the ground and help you know additionally screen it from the neighbors um we've gone through this project with city staff we kind of made sure that you know they were on board with what we were doing and we are asking for some variances as to um the three foot uh prop out from the wall instead of doing three foot i think we we're going to do 10 to 12 inches but still have a variation in the look and the elevations and the heights. So to kind of keep it with the feel to meet the architectural design standards in that respect. Um, I am here. If you have any other questions. Staff comment. Um, <clears throat> there are several, much of uh, many of which uh, have already been covered. Uh, perimeter and foundation landscaping is required in accordance with chapter 56 uh, for which a variance has been requested. Um, landscaping must be guaranteed for two years, so please uh, include this note on the landscaping plan. Um, let's see, uh, where facade faces adjacent residential uses or an area on the comprehensive land use plan designated for residential use, an earthen berm shall be installed no less than six feet in height, containing it at a minimum a double row of evergreen or deciduous trees planted at 15 foot intervals, plus all landscaping requirements set forth in chapter 56 of the Springdale Code of Ordinance. A variance has been requested. Uh, trash collection areas must be landscaped so their functions are fully contained and out of view of the adjacent property and the public right of way. Uh, please include uh, landscaping for the enclosure that is to be located there on the east side of the property. And facades over 100 feet in linear length shall incorporate wall projections and or recesses per Springdale commercial design standard. Uh, variance has been requested. Engineering comments. Local streets should have six foot of green space between the back of curb and the sidewalk. And um, we'd like to see a draft of the drainage easements. Um, I need a signed and sealed copy of the drainage report and then the grading permit package. And the only other issue that's not addressed is are you asking for a wider driveway than 40 feet? You have to come back and ask for a variance if you want it to be wider than 40 feet. We actually reduced it down to 40 feet because we didn't, um, didn't have that variance turned in. That was one of the questions. So it is currently at 40 feet. So if we do decide to come back, 
um, we will ask for that. In the future. But right now the plan shows it to be no more than 40 feet. Correct. So you don't need that, that variant. Okay. Correct. Is that it? Well, you, you said there would be trees along the north side. They don't show up on the landscape plan. I'm noticing that none of the trees seem to be showing up yeah, on that, that view right there, but there are trees. We do have them. Okay. I made a note that that would be one thing that would, the staff comment would have to make sure that all those trees are, uh, are included on the final landscaping plan. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they're not showing up on here, but that might be a layer issue. It might be a layer that got turned off. Correct. Any questions or comments from the audience? And you didn't ask for a waiver of street improvements. You're doing your street improvements on that side of the street. All yeah, the the we're showing the property. curb and gutter and the green space on the sidewalk. Um, I thought we were meeting the standards, but if Katie says that we are missing the six foot green space, then we're happy to add that six foot green space. And you'll re remember the other side of the road is being done with the other project that was approved last, week, last month. Yeah, that's- so we get this street completely widened out to the northern edge of the properties. Okay. Okay. To the commission. Is there somewhere notated on the plans how people go back and forth between the front corporate office and the warehouse or the warehouse and the corporate, or do they just simply walk through where the tractor trailers are driving? It's a pretty far distance. I have a feeling they'll probably get in their car and drive over. It'd be a lot faster for them, but no, there isn't a designated path if that's what you're asking. I'm just asking if there's somewhere they're walking where they're not going to get struck. That's what I'm looking for. Um, but you feel like at the distances that they would get in their car. Uh, I mean, if you look at one of those trucks, those trucks are those uh, 67 foot trailers. Uh, so from the face of the truck to the back of the truck, that's about 80 feet. I mean, so we're talking that that whole thing is probably a good 200 feet from one building to the other 250 feet or so. It's a good distance. It's, you know, not, not likely that somebody who just wants to get back there is not going to park near that building. In my opinion. But there could be, I mean, if they wanted to be careful, they could walk down the side and, and come across in that green space, not be in the traffic area if they wanted to. Yeah. Where the dumpsters are, is that traditional dumpsters or containers or? I think they are the really long ones that you might see at construction sites. Um, the, I don't know, the, the big ones, um, the roll on, okay. the roll -on type. Yeah. And we, we discussed with the client, the issue of carpets being laid all over everywhere. And I think we've got bigger ones than they have had in the past to keep that issue down. Yeah. We work with the contractor who has a similar system at his location. And we basically created an, uh, a, a containment area for that type of system where they can just roll in and roll out kind of. My question is, is there enough clearance as far as, and maybe I, I, don't, I don't know what the dimensions are here. I mean, so you see that second semi. Something that we run into kind of normally is that uh, they'll blow out the back of the fence. So we are, are gonna put bollards back there to kind of keep those, um, those containers from blowing out the back of the fence to kind of keep it in there. Yeah, no, my question is, is that it shows as far as there could be three containers. There are actually be... get a truck in there to actually load one of those if a semi is parked there. Hey, no, semi is not supposed to be parked there. It's supposed to be pickup trucks or people that are, you know, bringing stuff in with smaller trucks, not. You're saying if the semi is parked, dropping off the stuff in the storage building, how are, we're blocking the path for the containers to come in and out. Hmm. I mean, that's an operational issue. Uh, you got to have them picked up at times when there's not cars. Oh, and I would agree with that statement. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I see wrong with that right there, but <clears throat> just a call out. So. And I can't remember the, the pond that's indicated there on the east side. Is that existing? No, that's proposed. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the commission? And we can take all the variances together or separate? Together? Okay. So do I have a call for a vote? Ms. Mueller? 
Parker? Yes. The, uh, Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? David? James, you're on mute. Go ahead and come back. Okay. Mueller? David. Right. Yeah. So I've got seven zero variances um, passed. Do I have a motion on large scale? Motion by Mrs. Mueller. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Tyler. Parsley. Yes. Peters. I'm sorry, Tyler. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. David? Large scale passes 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Next item large scale L21 34, I 49 Industrial Park Phase 1. West Apple Blossom Avenue. We also have a waiver 21 19 of street requirements. West Apple Blossom and Graham Road, presented by Morrison Shipley Engineers and Crossland Realty. Anyone here for this? No one here from, Cross, from Morrison Shipley. Patrick, are you there? Patrick, are you online? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we yes. can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Right, Zoom video as well. You have Maddie Crossland for Crossland Realty Group. <clears throat> Maddie, do you want to go ahead? Patrick, are you going to make the presentation of what the large scale encompasses? Sure. Sorry. This, uh, we had a little bit of complications there. Um, yeah, this we're proposing uh, two uh, warehouse facilities um, that will be accessed off the future Dixie land um, road that that's coming through as a city project. Um, we're trying to time this where the, the warehouses uh, complete construction about the same time as Dixie land that way. Uh, all of our access and frontage is off Dixieland, and that's uh, the purpose of our waivers for Apple Blossom primarily, as well as Graham. Um, we, in our waiver letter, I believe we state that you know we understand that there's going to be some improvements per your code with Apple Blossom, but we would like a waiver um, with this development, and then as the uh, overall property develops, uh, when we do develop along the Apple Blossom frontage, we would then um, work through those improvements at that point. Uh, Graham uh, with the 612, uh, again, it's the same situation um, as far as that frontage can be worked through, but I think with 612, Graham might go away. Um, we've worked with staff. I think we've got all their comments generally addressed. So overall, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you. Staff comments? Um, our remaining comment is please provide a lighting plan. Uh, lighting is a necessary element for crime prevention and overall safety of the location. Yes, that will be uh, submitted with the full building package. All right, engineering comments. Um, there are some elevations in the drainage report that look incorrect. We just need to revise those. I think it's just a typo. Um, sheet flow length should be a maximum 100 feet. We'll need a revision for that in the drainage report. We need to show a trickle channel in the pond and include the detail for that trickle channel. <coughs> Note the 100 year water elevations in both ponds. We include details for the outlet structures in the pond. Submit drafts of the access and drainage easements. Have please coordinate drainage conflicts with the Dixieland project, but I think we have that taken care of. Um, note the right of way on Apple Blossom, and then add a note that the detention ponds shall be sodded to the 100 year water service elevation. Okay, let me remind you that this is a warehouse project. It is not a commercial project, so there are no commercial design standards. 
They did provide us with elevation so you can see what the buildings are going to look like. The area between these warehouses and Dixieland is the area that was remained as commercial development, and they will submit large scale development plans for any development that occurs on those pieces of property. Um, the mayor's here to address the, con the street considerations for Dixieland and Apple Blossom, and we'll let him address those issues. Okay, thanks. Um, we plan. The city plans to uh, improve Apple Blossom with the, our next bond issue, which we hope the vote will be sometime in 2023. Uh, so we, we, I, I'm, I'm certain we'll need to include that. Of course, that'll be subject to council approval, but, but I'm certain we'll, we'll need to approve or include uh, the full build out of Apple Blossom. We'll work with the city of Lowell and see what they can bring to the table, but. But we need to. We're, we're going to have to improve improve Apple Blossom uh, from uh, Thompson East or Thompson West. I'm sorry. So uh, that'll be a future bond project. Uh, we've also I've talked with the uh, with the owner, and they have agreed to work with our with James at Public Works and address any uh, any damage to Apple Blossom during construction. Uh, they they will use a uh, an access to apple to apple blossom during construction until Dixieland is built. So, uh, and but they will work with us to address any any potential damage that uh, that the construction traffic does to apple blossom in the meantime. But ultimately, uh, the city's going to be that's going to be a future bond project. And the improvements to Dixieland are on pace to be opened at the same time that they're getting ready to open these warehouses, and the warehouses won't open. Until Dixieland has been constructed and accepted, right down to the all location. the uh, all the right of ways acquired. About to, we should be starting to move uh, utilities very soon, and uh, so we'll we'll be proceeding with Apple Blossom or with Dixieland as soon as we can. I'm here if you have any more questions. Yeah, go ahead. Ed. So I was just getting ready to ask if there's any questions or comments from the audience. So. I live on Apple Blossom, and every time yeah. the water... If, can, I'm sorry, can you state your name and address okay. for the record, please? Mary Reddish, 506 West Apple Blossom. Thank you. Uh, I'm worried about the water, because they have taken out a five-acre pond on this place. And right now, every time you get over four inches of rain, it floods my yard. And I have a basement, and it leaks. And I'd like to know what they could do about that right now. I can tell you the pond that they took off there was a for wash water from the Beaver Water District. It wasn't a detention pond for stormwater on that piece of property. But it did retain a lot of water. It did retain a lot of water, but that's not was not its original function. Um, I would imagine the city engineer will get with the developer and will look at what needs to be done. Are they upsizing? And Teddy, you'll have to answer that for me. Are they proposing to upsize that drainage connection under Apple Blossom sometime in the future? Not as a part of this project. I imagine we could look at that if okay. it becomes a bond um, project. Um, they are proposing two large detention ponds to hold water back on this site so that there is no increase in peak flow. Okay. Do you know where the detention ponds are gonna be? Can you point to them on the drawing that's on the screen? Yeah, can you see that cursor? I don't see it yet. It says, here we go, here it comes. Yeah. Okay, there's one, and there's the other one. Are they close to Apple Blossom? I can't tell. Apple Blossom is at the very top of this drawing. That's Apple Blossom across there, and they're putting them right off of Apple Blossom uh, where their construction drive will come in, one that runs north and south, and one that that runs east and west to collect the stormwater off of the site. What about the water from those detention ponds that'll run down to apple blossom? Okay. They are designed to not increase the amount of water coming off this site any more than it is before development occurs, correct, Katie? Yes, ma'am. Okay. They detain everything on site from the development that occurs. When is this going to take place? This is part of what they have to build as to go along with this warehouse construction. Part of the approved plan is to build these two warehouses and those two detention ponds and the access out to Dixieland 
and a construction access into it until Dixieland is open. It's just that the water has really been bad when it rains. And when, since they took that pond out, it doesn't veer down towards the west of Apple Blossom. It veers east, which is where I live from this area. And it used to go to Puppy Creek, yeah. It used to go down that way, and now it's coming this way. And that's why I have more water on my land. I think, Katie, you'll make that note that they need to go look at the existing conditions on the road? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank How you. is that too late? Daddy. What? What the world? <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was, but okay. They get very wrong? young. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, uh, any other additional questions or comments? I'm Lynn Steele, I live at 5532 Walden Street. My question is now, who's gonna take care of apple blossom that's already been starting to deteriorate from crossland hauling dirt out of there and construction material back in? We're already seeing water standing on apple blossom that wasn't there before. And you can see the surface is starting to crack up already. So who's going to take care of it now is my question. Just like her problem, water standing everywhere that never did stand before. And okay. I want to know the exact. The mayor's plan. comment was that he, the public works director and the developer would be working on making sure that apple blossom is taken care of during construction. Okay. And engineering is going to go look at what the drainage situation is. And so I don't know if they have an answer today. But they they made aware of that situation, and the mayor's been working with the developer to keep the road in 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 good condition to use while the construction is okay. going on. That's what he so, just said. Okay. What's the actual footprint of the? I know they're going to be hundred thousand square foot. What's the actual footprint of those buildings? What are the dimensions of the buildings, Patrick? Can you tell us the dimensions? Uh, to be honest, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Well, the dimensions are roughly 210 feet by 500 feet. Okay. That's Thank you, yeah, they're 104,000 square foot buildings, rectangular buildings. I understand 100,000 square foot, but where are they going to be on the property? And how how long? How wide? And how tall? Okay. She just told you that the size of the buildings. You can see on this property where they were located behind the property that was remaining to be commercial. They're only on the resident, on the industrial property that's back there. And I can't tell you how far they are from the road. Patrick, can you tell us how far it is from the New Dixie land to the, to the drives that go into these buildings? How far are they from Walden Street? We're, we're, we're getting ready to, he's going to Sorry, roughly 350 feet, but we'll, we'll work to confirm while we're on the call. 350 feet, does that include the street waterway or just from the edge of Dixieland? It's from the edge of Dixieland. Okay, and then you have the width of Dixieland, which is what, Katie? 60 feet? Yeah, for, for major. Okay, it's a 60 foot right of way, so we're 410 feet from the back of of Walden Street to get to those buildings. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is David Gilbert. I live at 5714 Walden Street, and we've been talking about warehouses on this property for 12 years now. And for 12 years now, the people in this neighborhood have been told, we'd love to fix your streets, but we can't for one reason or another. Now you have a case where someone is actually obligated by ordinance to fix the streets and they've requested a waiver. I don't think that's fair to the residents of this part of Springdale at all. We've been waiting a long time for this and to continue to be told, wait three to five more years and we'll take care of your problem is getting kind of old. Uh, J.B. Hunt's built a huge parking lot on Apple Blossom. The traffic is much more than it ever has been. And I know that's in Lowell, it's not in Springdale, but that's part of what we have to live with every day is a thousand car parking lot dumping onto Apple Blossom. It's 20 feet wide. 
Graham Road has been seriously damaged by the construction and uh, it's been sort of patched back, but it's uh, questionable in my mind. And I've been in the asphalt business off and on for 40 years. So I know a little bit about roads and I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that sufficient for the damage that's been done. Apple Blossom uh, has been severely damaged by the trucks. You can see it when it rains. There are ruts where there were never ruts before. The cracking in the pavement's a sure sign that that road is about to fail. Uh, and then we'll have bad conditions. And it's really not fair to ask the people in this part of Springdale who have been living in Springdale for 20, 30, 40 years, just keep waiting and eventually we'll get around to you. So I'm opposed to the waiver uh, under any condition. Uh, to say that they won't access Apple Blossom or Graham is a nice thing to say that they should be exempt because they won't access it. But the truth is they have accessed it and they will continue to access Apple Blossom and Graham throughout the construction. I don't see how you can vote for a project to have access for a street that's not there and won't be there for at least two years. Uh, every time that anything has come up on this project, they've stated, the applicant has stated, we're in a big hurry, we gotta approve this tonight. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta go, go, go. I don't think they're gonna let their buildings sit empty for a year to a year and a half because Apple Blossom is not complete yet. I'm sorry, because Dixieland is not complete yet. So they'll be back on Apple Blossom and I just don't think that's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Let me remind you that the actual waiver is granted by the city council, not the planning commission. Because planning commission can only make a recommendation. They can't actually grant the waiver. Well, I, I understand, but yeah. you get, do get to make a recommendation. That's correct. I, I think your recommendation should be no, because we've been waiting a long time for help up here. Okay. I have one other question. Did you make the same plea to the city of Lowell when J.B. Hunt built their parking lot? I Did was not informed of anything about Lowell. I don't have any, I don't get notification okay. from Lowell. I don't know. Uh, if I had known, yes, I would. Okay, I, was, I just wondered if anybody made that same comment to the city of Lowell when J.B. Hunt built their Well, I, you know, I don't know. We're in a meeting of either. the city of Springdale, not the city of Lowell, okay. but uh, I, I was seriously disappointed to see that they built that parking lot without that, but I don't have a voice in Lowell. I'm not a resident of Lowell. I'm a resident of Springdale for 30 years. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the audience? To the commission. We need a motion on the waiver to council. It's a recommendation to council. Well, I, or it can be sent to council without a recommendation. If that's what you want to uh, quickly, I'd like to address the comments on behalf of the development. Uh, regarding the construction timeline, uh, we have no plans for uh, to begin immediate construction, if you will. Uh, we are fully aware that for this project to be successful, it is dependent upon the open access of the future Dixie Lane Road improvements. This project will be timed uh, to finish at the same time and will not open uh, until that road is complete. So I want to be clear that we will we will not be immediately starting construction or have a building setting there for a year with, with no road. So there will not be uh, occupant traffic on Apple Blossom nor Graham Road. I uh, would also like to point out to the Planning Commission and thank you uh, to the residents for their, their patience. We I realize that uh, this, this is of great concern to you and the for the, your community. Uh, and we want to we want to be good neighbors. So we'll uh, work with staff to address all of the comments regarding the stormwater. And in regards to construction traffic, uh, we have already uh, put a, a permanent barricade uh, on any entrances onto Graham Road. So that access is not usable by construction traffic. Uh, it is permanently blocked. So that will not be a problem. And we will, of course, follow all uh, regulations and hauling standards as it relates to any construction traffic on Apple Blossom. And uh, as the mayor stated, are happy to agree to a maintenance, uh, come to a maintenance agreement with the city to address any further uh, issues we may cause. The question I have on the street uh, requirements is, is that, is there any payment in lieu of components in this that versus a waiver? Um, that's a, an issue that the council will have to take up as well. They are donating the right of way for Dixie Lane across this piece of property. They are donating the right of way for Apple Blossom and they are donating the right of way for Ram. So that's 
part of the cost of construction for that. So they're doing that versus having to pay for street improvements. They are making those donations. Planning the council would have to make a determination whether or not that is sufficient to cover it or not. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the Planning Commission? Um, yeah, it's, it's part of public record. I don't know how we would put that into writing. I think that's up to the city attorney as to how you'd want to do that. If that's a condition that the, that the council wants to put on the waiver of the street improvement too, I think it could be done with that. Shannon, I think probably that's taken care of. I mean, they're not going to have access except to Dixieland for, for these buildings. The, again, the temporary construction access we're allowing off of uh, Apple Blossom, but but they won't have access, get their C of O, and they won't have what they need until uh, until Dixieland's open. And we have done this in other locations. If you'll remember when the Highland Oncology was built, they didn't have direct access off of Don Tyson Parkway or 56th Street, and they were allowed to build a construction access off of 56th Street, and they didn't get occupancy of that building until the street was in, approved out to Don Tyson Parkway. So that's, this is not the first time we've done that. Yeah. I'm sorry. If, yes, if you go to the uh, agenda packets, it is in the Planning Commission's agenda for tonight's meeting. That's where you can find it. Yeah, all of the same things that you see on the screen was in their packet and you can see all the same things there. Okay. Based off of Apple Blossom's current um, zoning is for, or zoning is not the right word. The type of road, uh, are semis allowed on that as it is today? I think the discussion was to mark it as a non-truck route until improvements are completed. Am, am I correct, Mayor? Truck traffic allowed on Apple Blossom in its current condition. Uh, I think there was some discussion about that. It is on the master street plan to be a collector street. So when it gets widened to that, it would, it yeah, would the be a truck. Future state. It's not a designated truck route right now. Yeah, it? it's not. I didn't think so. And it won't be. It'll just be the construction, the right. construction traffic. If you see truck, if you see trucks on it that aren't related to construction or making the delivery. Uh, on Apple Blossom, then call our police department and we'll deal with it. If if there, if it's not a truck route, is it posted? Mm -hmm. Is it posted? As we don't post on? truck routes. We okay. We, we post truck routes. We don't post no truck routes. Got it. Okay. If there's not a sign that says it's a truck route, it's not a truck route. Got it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? So on the waiver, uh, there's be a motion. Motion to approve subject staff comments pushed to city council. Is there a recommendation to grant the waiver? Grant the waiver, yes, ma'am. Okay. Motion by Mr. Covert. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Mueller. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Parker? Yes. Parsley? No. Uh, this passes 7 1. Recommendation will go to council for the second meeting in uh, November. And uh, large scale. I have a motion. Subject to staff comments. Motion to approve subject to staff comments. Motion by Mr. Covert. A second. Second by Mrs. Mueller. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? 
Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Large scale passes 8 0. Thank you. Uh, next large scale via Emma, 500 East, uh, L21 35, 500 East Emma Avenue, presented by Civil Design Engineers. My name is Ferdy Forty with Civil Design. Um, this, pro this project is uh, on 500 block along Emma between uh, Water and Park Street, two and a half acre project with uh, four buildings proposed along the perimeter of the site, parking shown in theory. Staff comments? Staff comments? Uh, with we have only standard comments at this time. Everything else has been addressed. Just a few engineering comments. Um, submit an updated drainage report for the revised drainage plan, and it should be signed and sealed. Show analysis of the trickle channel along the parking lane on Emma to verify that flow is in within the permissible spread of water guidelines in Chapter 106, just that it won't inundate a travel lane. Um, revise the storm pipe on Water Street. It must be concrete. And then I, I did have a question. I'm trying to figure out the planters on the <laughs> west side of the parking lot, the boxes that are shown. I just really couldn't tell what those were. Are those, oh. are those planters? Is that correct? Yeah, they're uh, social rocks, we call them, and they're like uh, areas that uh, have like swings and something that attracts people to interact. It's a, it's okay. a site amenity. Basically. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. This project is in the downtown form based code. Yes. They've, they've worked really hard to address all the form based code issues. And can you tell us how many uh, residential units we have and how many commercials, just so that the public knows, because it's hard to tell off of this? Yes, we've got 131 total residential units that are one bedroom. I think there's some two bedroom and studios mostly. And then we've got six uh, commercial suites in the bottom of the EMA building at, okay. the, at the lower level of the EMA building. Okay. And that's what's required in, in the form-based code. Are you anticipating any commercial at the corner of Water Street and Meadow as any possible commercial at that location? Or maybe a live work unit? Okay. Okay, and that's allowed in the form-based code and it'll, the building will be designed to do that. I just think people need to hear we're talking about having ice cream next to the park, which everybody's gonna want ice cream if it's hot out there. So that's a really good idea as far as that's concerned. I wanted it to come from you instead of me. So, okay. Anything else? No. All right, any questions or comments from the audience? My only other comment is the look of Emma Street is changing drastically. A little bit. And it's it's good for downtown Springdale. It's good for downtown Springdale. It's good for Springdale as a whole, too. All right. Let's do the commission. Motion subject staff comments. Motion subject staff comments. Motion by Mr. Covert. I have a second. Second by Ms. Mueller. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Large scale passes 8 0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item L21 36, Cadence Plaza, south side of Sunset Avenue, across from Sterwin Street, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, we're proposing uh, three commercial retail buildings um, on this three and a half acres. Uh, and I'll answer any questions. Staff comments? Uh, final approval is subject to rezone and variance approval. Uh, both are to be heard at the December 7th Planning Commission meeting. Um, uh, all sides of a principal building that directly faces an abutting public right of way shall feature at least one customer entrance unless the principal building directly faces more than two abutting rights of way then only two entrances are required one along the primary street and another along a secondary street a variance will uh, be requested 
Uh, it appears that the south side of the two buildings facing north will require uh, foundation landscaping and the uh, variance is being requested. And finally, building facades shall include a repeating pattern with no less than three of the following color change, texture change, material module change, expressions of architectural or structural bay through a change in no less than 12 inches in width, such as an offset reveal or projecting rib. At least one element must repeat horizontally and no element shall repeat at intervals of greater than 30 feet horizontally or vertically. A variance has been requested. Engineering comments. Um, there's a handicap ramp at the Southeast Drive that appears to conflict with an existing storm manhole. Um, we request that you smooth out the jogs and the sidewalk on 412 to transition over approximately 25 feet instead of 15, just as long as you can do it. Um, and then the drainage easement around the pond did not look correct to me. Um, it did not look to surround the entire pond. And it should have 20 foot outside of the 100 year water service elevation. And then you'll just need to submit your grading permit package and your floodplain development permit application. Did you show what the elevations of the buildings look like? And I can address the variance uh, requests. Um, the, the first one, um, so we've kind of got two fronts. We've got one on the 412 and one on the Morris. Um, the obvious customer entry side, which is this, that face that he was showing, um, the northern face would be 412 would be the customer entry side. We'll have some entrances on the southern side, um, that face, um, face Morris, um, or Maze, sorry. Maze. Maze, Maze sorry. Um, there will be just delivery type um, interests in the back. Um, we are requesting uh, that variance for the northern side only to have the customer entry. Um, the south side, uh, we are requesting uh, the foundation landscape variance um, for the southern side. Um, we try to double up the trees all around the pond to kind of screen that, that side um, for that landscaping variance. And then the building facade uh, modifications um, I believe that the 30 foot horizontal um, requirement and we're, we're at 32 and a half is kind of the way the bays lined up um, for those individual tenant spaces. So, um, and then we can address the engineering comments with Katie and I'll, I'll answer any questions. It's, it is set up so the buildings can have a drive through lane on three different locations on this site, depending on what the potential use is. Correct. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? If this is approved subject to staff comments tonight, that means that the rezoning has to come back or has to be submitted at the next meeting and so does the variance request. So, so we realize we're doing this in backwards order. I understand. Yes, sir. We Motion. still want to get it in front of you. Um, we, we realize that the variance is the date was the week before. So we still want to bring it to you, um, get feedback, comments, approve the possible those various items. Um, uh, there was a, a, a double chance. We missed it. They didn't submit it on time. The rezoning request didn't get picked up when it should have. Uh, the various requests were submitted too late to meet the deadline. I, I can tell you after, with everything going on, we are amending our application to include a statement that tell us everything else you're going to be submitting on this on each of those applications. So we cross check to make sure we get everything because there is so much going on for all of us. It's just hard to keep up with. So, Will there be a variance? I, I heard as far as the utility easement near the pond. There, the, this is just a, dra a drainage easement. I think we just had it shown incorrectly. Um, it won't impact the, the build building, building space, building footprint. You just uh, don't have it. We just don't have it shown on the, correctly. On the plan correctly, yes. I think is the problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't expect a variance? No. Yeah. Okay. These are the only variances that we will we'll be requesting. I think we've got everything else covered. And the, the variance on the elements is 32 and a half feet instead of 30. Which is and we've got them set up on, on the, the bays on how the tenant right. spaces are. And that's the reason instead of them being on 30 feet, they're on 32 and a half centers. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's, that's that request. Okay. 
and the landscaping for foundation, you've included additional landscaping along that south side to block to the residents to the to the south instead of putting it up against the building, correct? Correct, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Be a motion. I have I have a quick question. I'm sorry, Kevin. Um, so I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at what you have up on the screen. The building on the left has a drive-through that would send the traffic north. Would it not? How are we? It, it looks like it's going to send traffic north directly into where people will be turning in from sunset. Am I? How are? How are we going to? Three drive-throughs makes me a little, yeah, but uh, I can live with it, except I just don't understand why it would be, why people would be going around and how we're going to get that traffic flowing in the right direction. Can somebody help me understand uh, what this uh, space between the two buildings, how the traffic's going to flow through here? First of all, does my question make sense? <laughs> Definitely. You know, I understand, Peyton. Um, it, you know, we're just we're trying to get those drive throughs on there for just those certain types of uses. We don't want to exclude those uses if there's a, drive, a need for a drive through. We are going to be, um, you know, approximately 70 feet back from the intersection. Um, and if we put it on the opposite side, um, you know, say we flop the drive through to the opposite side. Yeah, office. so if you had the drive through on the uh, on the building to the right headed south, it, yep. it feels like it would flow with all the other drive throughs See how they go from yep. uh, east to west? Wouldn't that make more sense? So so the, the, the reason we decided not to do that is because you've got to have some stacking room in that drive through And if everybody's heading south, you're still going to have that crossover traffic as you head into the site. Um, from oh, Hill. oh, I got you. OK, because we've got to come in. You know, north to south over there, just the way the drive through would be set up. Um, and so, you know, you've got your call windows and, and all that, how that would um, just kind of stack in there. We just felt like it would be better on the opposite side where you could come around the building, head north. And then, yeah, th there's going to be some uh, maneuvering that, that has to happen um, as they come out of the drive through. I'm not saying the window has to be on the very northern side of that building, it can be in the center of that building. So that would give them more room to. Uh, maneuver uh, through that that drive area before they get to the parking uh, parking stalls. Okay, I just th I think it's something we need to uh, consider because I think you know I would assume most traffic will will be coming off of Sunset headed in the opposite direction, and you know triangulating I don't know what the word is for these drive throughs where they're where they work together somehow and maybe shoot people out onto maze instead of bringing them right back to the, I don't know. That's my only, that's my only kind of heartburn with it right now is I just, I can't imagine how the traffic is actually going to flow through there without being a huge mess. Jason, on how many, point. how many spaces are there, Jason? Do you know um, how many parking spaces? Well, uh, he's looking. 125 total. I mean, you know, you get, we had is we didn't want people coming off of 412 into a drive-through lane that they yeah. were south on and stacking up in front of the buildings and onto the highway. That's why it has to come the other direction. I'm just concerned. I mean, so now that you bring this up, I, I totally agree with you, right? Because then you get a situation where people right. are backed up on the highway. Uh, but I mean, is that not, uh, I mean, is that just not a limitation of the site in my opinion? I mean, look, I mean, three drive-throughs, 125 parking spaces. Um, you know, I, it just, it just seems like, uh, it just seems a little chaotic to have three. So Jason, would you have the opportunity on the one that Peyton's talking about instead of channeling straight out, once they go through the drive-through, do you have any kind of directional signing you can lay down that would just simply steer them over out into the exit lane? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can, we can kind of, maybe blow that area up or something and kind of give some signage and, and maybe help that conversation. Some striping. So what, it, yeah, what's the, I mean, what's the depth of the building there? So 
for let's take the one on the far left. People are coming around and cars are stacking up. Let's assume that the the drive through window is on the south end, right? So they can get it right there. How how deep is that building and how many cars could you stack there before they're now covering up the two handicapped spaces? You see what I'm saying? So the building is, is 80 foot deep. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. It's, and so, I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the placement of the windows on each one of, on each side could potentially be different. Um, the one on mm -hmm. the, on, on the Western side could be a little further south to give us some stacking room there. And then the other one uh, on the east side of that building could be more central, I think, to give some stacking room. But then the, the backup could be in that parking area um, to the south. Okay. I guess I don't have, I don't have any real, you know, I guess any any comments per se to put down on paper, but I just think it's something we need to. I, that's just a lot of that's a lot of traffic flow, and I worry about pedestrians being able to walk and access and get into places and not get hit. And it just seems like a lot going on. But I just think if if staff works with you and and they feel comfortable with it, I'm okay with it. Any other comments? This be a motion. Motion to approve subject staff comments. Motion by Mr. Cover. Second. Second by Dr. Compton. <clears throat> Cover. Yes. David. Yes. Mueller. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Hard scale passes 8 0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next section Board of Adjustments B21 76, Michael Valdry, 1801, Colby Circle, variance for fence height requirement in the front yard from three feet to four feet, presented by Michael Valdry. Hi, I'm Michael Vaudry. Uh We live at 1801 Colby Circle, and we're requesting the fence, fence height be raised a little bit to create. Uh, what we're trying to do is our living area is in the back of the house and we live on Colby Circle. It's a really nice street. A lot of people walk in this, you know, friendly neighborhood. And uh, we're looking to put a courtyard near our front door to where it can be decorative. And uh, we want to do like a two inch uh, concrete space with pavers on top of that. And, and then I provided a picture of the type of fencing we're talking about is uh, see-through fencing to where there's visibility to the front of the house and the front front door for you know police department, and we'd like to uh, just have a little area where we can be out front and also put some shrubbery and, and uh, landscaping in front of the fence. Uh, so. Any staff comments? No comments. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? It is a call for vote. Call for vote by Mrs. Mueller. David? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Variance passes 8 0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next one B21 90, Benny Holloway, 12994, Knight Lane, variance for rear setback from 20 feet to 10 feet. Yeah. I'm Benny Holloway. I own the residence. And we're looking to put an addition on the backside, which is the reason for the rear setback. When we bought the property, we were under the understanding that we were in Benton County, which Benton County setbacks are a little bit different. And we had in mind to do this when we purchased the property. Um, there is no other dwelling near me. I'm zoned A1 and going to stay A1, um, even near me. The property line is the fence to the far right now. Um, 
and we're looking to add 20 foot towards the fence, which for the setback. How large, how large is this track? It's uh acre. Okay, the problem if it stays is in an A1, the minimum lot size in an A1 zone is 200 foot of frontage and two acres. So technically you have a non-conforming lot to start with. And so are you adding, what percentage of addition will you be adding to the structure? Uh, square footage wise, uh -huh. is that correct? Um, it is a 20 by 48, I do believe, or 40. I've got the plan. Okay, because uh, you can't in expand a non-conforming use more than 30% and the planning commission has to approve that expansion. And so we have to know that you're not incre increasing the size of the house by more than 30%. Uh, okay. And have you looked, is Ed still here? Have you looked at that? It hasn't come before our office yet. I just, um, did you talk to Tom? I talked to Tom. Uh, yeah. Actually, I had, when, when I started this, I talked to Tom and Tom come out and looked at it and didn't see a problem with it. Um, and he told me how to proceed with this, this process. Okay, so we don't know if the non-conforming lot size was taken into account. No, I do not. No. Okay, have you, are, are you ready to start or? Uh, yeah, I'm just waiting on this. That That's, yeah. Okay, I, th I think we need to check that 30% before we can talk about the variance. So you need to get, I would suggest we table this and let you get with Ed and with Tom and y'all determine whether it's more than 30% and we put it back on the agenda with a request to expand the non-conforming use and grant the variance at the same time. Now, where's your septic system? You're not covering the septic no, system. No, not right? at all. That's the reason we stopped short um, and not going full length of the house was because the septic is actually on the south side um, there. And actually, we're just going out where the picture of the porch, we're just extending out just a little bit further than where the porch is now, which is an existing deal. Um, and it'll come down, so. Okay. Again, uh, we, we need to check those things. And just so we don't cause you any problems, I would suggest we table this and you get back with, with Tom and with Ed and we work out those things and put it on next month's agenda and you'll be on the beginning of the agenda. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, next item, B21-93 Window World, 5725 North Thompson Street, variance for paved parking requirement presented by Anton Myers. Uh, my name is Anton Myers. Uh, I'm with uh, Window World. Um, we're asking for a, a variance of really not changing anything. Uh, to, you know, this was a property that was left over from Bethel, you know, came from Bethel Heights. And we have a gravel parking lot, which is a very uh, stable and long, you know, it's been there for 40 years. And we're asking for the variance of where we don't have to pave the uh, drive around the building. Uh, or a use area where we park our service trailers. Uh, we do keep up this property. We're, we've just uh, acquired it here recently as far as leasing it. Uh, we're trying our best to really upgrade the looks of the property, you know, become a good uh, citizen of, of Springdale. Uh, I know I've heard from several different uh, people from the uh, Springdale Planning Commission and, and also an inspector and, and all like that that you know, this has been, this property been on the city radar for quite a while, from, you know, from the way it looked before. Uh, we, we've cleaned it all up and everybody's really commenting how, how nice the property looks. And we're trying to, you know, we're all about curb appeal. And so we're asking, you know, to, you know uh, it would be a financial hardship for us to have to put this money out to, to pave it. Uh, we do have paved parking and it's already been verified as far as we've got enough parking areas and things like that. We have a, a paved driveway. This is just to go around the back of the building, which for us would really have no value. It, it just takes the money away from what we can use to improve the looks of the, the building and the front of the building, things like that. 
And so we're asking for the variance of not to have to, to uh, pave this area and just continue using it as, as it has been done for the last 40 years. Give you a little history on this piece of property. It had automotive services of various kinds and in various conditions when it was brought into the city of Springdale from Bethel Heights. Uh, I know that neighborhood services work with them. There are a lot of junk cars parked on that. That got cleaned up. And I believe I was told the some of it was being sublet out in violation of the lease arrangements that the owner had. So that was all cleared out. And I can tell you that when the world has done a great job of cleaning all this stuff up, it is much better than it has ever been. And uh, the area in the back, uh, as, as he said, is very stable. Uh, they're not going to be parking a lot of stuff back there. They have a few trucks that come in that, that or trailers that park there that are going out doing work for them. So uh, staff would recommend that we grant this waiver to this renter at this location. And if it changes again, we'd have to go back and talk about it and see what the use is gonna be. I think they plan on being there a while. So I don't think we're gonna yeah. have to go back and do something about that. In fact, and that's everything that's behind the fence, correct? Yes. And they do have enough paved parking to meet the parking requirements in front of the building and some on the side to meet the actual paved parking spaces it's the driveway in the back and the that big area in the back that's that's gravel now too. So any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission. Is this a request variance to just simply never do the paving or just is this a two-year extension or one? Well, year they're extension? asking for it to stay mm -hmm. unpaved as long as Window World is there. Now. I don't know if sometime in the future they may want to go back and pave some of it, but they're asking for as long as Window World is the the renter that it stay unpaved. Correct? Yes. Yeah. And how long is how long is your lease there? We have uh, options of twenty years. Your term is twenty years. Yes. Because we're we're not in home business, so we don't have very much traffic at all going. You know. We got a couple of delivery trucks a, 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 a day, I mean, excuse me, a week to come in. Uh, we don't have very much walk. We're not a retail business. So we're, it's not, we're not using this for retail sales or anything like that. I mean, we have, we have four or five people a day that come in. We're, we, we think we're being a, you know, we got a stampede coming through. Uh, we're primarily just, you know, we got, you know, it's our offices, it's our warehouse space. The guys come in each day and load up and they're gone and they're gone for the day. So. It's, you know, we have very low traffic count, uh, retail and our own usage. And you didn't rent the building for the outside space. You rent, rented the building for the structure itself to be able to house and warehouse your equipment yes. and operate your business. So yes. it's just the bonus they got all that extra area with them. And it's much cleaner than it was. Yes. And, we, and we're, we're planning on continuously keeping it clean, you know, you know, improve the lawn area out there. We're going to have a sign to, as soon as we get this, uh, Cleared up right here. We're gonna have a nice, you know, lighted sign. It's gonna be going up front. You know, I'm gonna fix it up nice out there. Like I say we're we're all about curb appeal. So, you know, we want to, if if we're gonna sell curb appeal, we also got to show curb appeal. So, this like I say, it's gonna be a good. Uh, it's gonna be good for Springdale as far as if you're gonna have finally have a place there that's gonna look nice and you're gonna be proud of. It. Say, hey, this is part of Springdale. What was the um... Was it an electric or plumbing supply company just right up the streets on the other side of 71? On the other side of 71. Well, uh, it, was a, it was a large development that went just to uh, the pool company and then just past the pool company. Yeah, there was a new building that's gone in there, yes. And it, they paved theirs you now. The, Northeast Trailers that was next door to Not it. Not the Northeast that. Trailers, but uh, that particular development that we approved, uh, the back lot area, was that paved or was that gravel or a combination of both? The area that they're using for their trucks and stuff is paved. The area that's not being that wasn't paved. Okay. So for the supplies and stuff like that. I don't think they store anything outside. Okay. For the most part. Okay. I'm just calling that out as far as consistency yeah. in these areas if they were storing stuff outside it'd be a different situation they're not storing anything outside yeah. 
and the only things that they will have on there will be a few uh like 16 foot enclosed trailers mm -hmm. five bed trailers i mean it's not it's not big semi truck trailers it's, right. it's just small utility trailers that we use for our installers use they park them there at night and they're gone in the morning and if you're approving this uh waiver of paved parking in that or paved pavement in that area uh if that gets approved it could be if, if we see that it's not being used properly you can always bring it back up and and uh review the variance again yeah, I, th I think the difference is is that you're a tenant in this location and not the owner of the building and and, and so i'm just calling these things out for yeah. consistency mm -hmm. um i think if you ended up being the owner of the building um that's where i'd have a difference of opinion on, on we had a discussion with the owner he understands the situation is not to be leased to anyone else for any other use in the back that's in the lease agreement itself the areas in the front that could be leased for something else, he knows he has to come back and discuss how those are going to be used if they're used for anything else. We're just, their, their variance request is only for the area that's behind the fence. Yes. Yeah, I understand that, but it is inconsistent with other yeah. buildings in proximity. I, I can also tell you that things in Bethel Heights created some really unique situations for us too. So we're working through those as we go forward. Okay. That, that's all I had on, on that. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions or comments from the Planning Commission. This will be a that's call, a call for, the for the vote. Yep. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Cover. Mueller. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert? Yes. David? No. This passes 7 1. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. B21 96, deviation for Kid Spot LLC, 724 Deaver Street. Deviation for minimum build to line against the primary streets. Consideration of Searcy Avenue presented by McClellan Engineering. Good evening, Commission. Uh, my name is Adam Osweiler with McClellan Engineers on behalf of the applicant for this deviation request. It is, uh, we heard earlier from Patsy about the remapping of this uh, piece, piece of property to try to get a uh, proposed kid spot therapy clinic. Uh, there's one existing uh, a little bit down the road that we're trying to uh, basically a little bit bigger one uh, for the uh, children that are there. And so the setback requirements that are in for the NC2 right now um, don't really give us a lot of space for parking based on the amount of staff and children that'll be there uh, for therapy. And so what we're trying to do is reduce those setbacks along the north side of the primary street from 30 to uh, 10. And then also on the south side, there is Searcy uh, that is, Patsy, you may want to help me on this one. It, it, it's kind of an alley that's yeah. not really a, a side street. And so we would like that to be classified as an alley so that we can use that setback of five feet on Searcy instead of uh, it being, being classified as a uh, side Secondary street, street. And, and using the 30 foot setback. It's an unusual situation. They want to be closer to the street than what is allowed in a neighborhood center type two. Correct. Remember neighborhood center type one, the building has to be built right on the right of way line. I think when we go through the review of the form based code, we're going to create some deviations that we won't have to ask specifically because it seems silly that we would set them back that far on these kind of uses as well. All the prop, all the parking will be interior to the site. Correct. And Cersei, as we kind of, it, it's hard to determine whether that's really a street or an alleyway. So staff would recommend that the deviations be granted to allow it to be closer to the street on each side so that we can maximize the parking on the inside. Correct, yeah. But by maximizing the parking on site, it reduces the amount that we have to go talk to adjacent property owners and try to do a parking share with, uh, with them. With them having 35 spots right now is kind of what we intend to have on the site. There's 35 staff employees 
that doesn't re really leave a lot of room for people that are visiting to be able to park on site. Um, so the idea is that there will be some offsite parking for staff to allow some of the um, parents or anybody dropping off um, some of the kids to be able to park on site as well. Because it, it just creates a, a space where, you know, if you're having to park off site and walk, the, the safety and walkability and connectivity for what this, this, the building is going to be used for, it just kind of reduces the, uh, you know, the, the safety of that. So that's why we want to have a little bit more uh, room on site to be able to utilize some of that area for parking. And the parking requirement that they have is more than what the form base code would require them to have. They're Correct. adding the additional space to accommodate the type of use that they have. They provide occupational and physical therapy for children with disabilities and all kinds of challenges. And they need to be able to bring those kids directly into that building and not have to come from an offsite. I think it's a good use for the property. I think they've maximized the use of it in these variances. These deviations are minimum of what it would take to put this building in a location that will function well for them in the city as well. And this is Peyton. I will just piggyback off what Patsy kind of alluded to earlier as we go through relooking at the form based code. I think this is particularly the setback off of the primary street is something that me personally, somebody who's been looking at the code and developing has noticed that's something that kind of is misaligned with what we want. And so outside of the site, the site specific details with the parking in general, I just think that um, we've identified that setback as a problem area with our code that we intend to look at. Would you say, Patsy? I agree. I agree. Yeah. There may be some situations in a neighborhood center type two that that setback is needed, but to use that as a general rule just seems to be a little bit in conflict. As we work through using the form based code, we've identified two or three things. And as you know, where we are starting the uh, update of the downtown master plan and review the form based code. So we may be making these recommendations to you then. They just didn't want to have to wait till all that got done. Correct. Yes. Yeah. But they're ready to move forward. We are. I mean, we're, we're in the preliminary design stages, but we would, having a, a decision made on this would allow us to move forward with, you know, going to LSD and, and getting yeah. those um, designs complete. Right. Any questions or comments from the audience? This will be a first formal deviation from the form-based code too, by the way. Yeah. We haven't done any of those yet. To the commission, this will be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for vote by Mr. Covert. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Euler? Passes eight zero. Thank, Thank you, you all. Next item, uh, our next section waivers. W21 17, Jim and Betty Cash, 5392 Highway 112. Waiver of sidewalk requirements presented by Satterfield and Jim Cash. Hi, I'm Jim Cash asking a waiver for our sidewalk requirements okay. on 112. Staff comment? If you all remember, 112 is in design phase through the Arkansas Highway Department for a widening with a median and a 10 foot side path on one side and a five foot sidewalk on the other side. Staff would recommend that this one be waived because it is part of that highway redesign. We don't exactly know where it's going to go yet because they haven't. They haven't finalized their design enough for it. So no. we're we're recommending that this be recommended to council for a waiver. Yeah. Any questions or comments? To the commission. Your recommendation. And this would be a motion to recommend to council for the waiver. Second. Motion by Mrs. Mueller. I have a second. Second by Mr. Covert. Parsley? Yes. Tyler? Austin? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Mueller? Parker? Yes. Waiver passes 8 0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, w21 18, Ray Hathaway, 13 294, Robbins Road, waiver of sidewalk requirements presented by Ray Hathaway. I am uh, essentially asking for what Mr. Cash just asked for. We uh, were building a house and 
uh, I just found out that I needed to ask to not have to put a sidewalk there. Staff comment? I think this is an area we've already granted a waiver because it's kind of out there by itself. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's yeah. just north of Ecclesi and none of the houses have it. I was just told I still had to. I don't think that we have any intentions to do any road improvements on this. Not that I am aware of anyway. Any questions or comments? To the commission, call for the vote. Nope, be a motion. Excuse me, motion. Recommend waiver. Recommend the waiver. A motion by Mr. Covert, a second by Ms. Mueller. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Mueller. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Staff will prepare the resolution. This goes to council on the 23rd. I forgot to tell Ms. Cat, Mr. Cash the same thing. It'll go to council on the 23rd. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Uh, planning director report. The rezoning request on Elm Springs Road from A1 to C5 was approved by council. The conditional use for the auto sales on North Thompson and Clayton were both approved, and the two tandem lots were approved. The uh, council overturned the planning commission's denial of the conditional use for the brothers rental for campground at 1815 Bitter Lane. He proposed a revision to that request to the city council and asked to scale back his campsite to a two camper van RV sites only for campers that are 26 feet in maximum length with a four person maximum per vehicle with no public campsites. He presented an operation plan that they could be, uh, they could rent two camper van spots on a nightly basis for no more than five continuous nights or people max per vehicle. Uh, the booking platforms he would use would be HipCamp or Explore, ExploreEden.com. Uh, there are some rules that were to be acknowledged on the platforms that there would be no tent sites, that there, this is a primitive site with no restrooms, and there would be no dumping of any waste materials allowed on the site. The RV or has to have their own portable toilet and or in the RV itself. Uh, there would be no dumpster on site and all trash has to be packed out. There would only be one fire pit and they have to check the websites to see if there are any burn bans. Uh, they are re required to use no, uh, keep flames no higher than two feet or lower, only use pieces of wood that are no longer than two feet and only use dead wood that's on the site itself. Um, they are had to acknowledge that there's private property and had to stay on this campsite itself and the site would be marked on all directions so you know when you were coming onto it. Um, the uh, people who are renting the RV sites would re be required to have on-site tags that had to be filled out with reservation name date and be posted on the site and all the trails and access would be marked and there would be a fire extinguisher and a rain barrel with hose on the site and sign on-site signs saying no dumping of any waste on that site. That's what the planning the city council approved with those conditions. Uh, the waiver of the street improvements for 112 in March for the office warehouse project was approved. Uh, they approved an ordinance calling for the annexation of the surrounded land areas in the southeast section of the city. There are several tracts that is completely surrounded by either Fayetteville or Springdale on each side and those areas that the city of Springdale has more Boundary than Fayetteville will be annexed into the city of Springdale. The city attorney's office has started that notification process and the ordinance will come before the city in the next couple of months. Uh, they, as the mayor said, has all the acquisitions for Dixieland Road and, and finalized one more acquisition on 40th Street. Um, they did some work on the American Rescue Plan Act funds hired an administrator, designated portion of the funds as lost revenue and approved hazard pay for police and fire department staff that have been have been and remain in direct contact with the, the pandemic. They approved amendments to the railroad agreement for opening of Maple Crossing. Um, what is being put into that agreement is there would be no longer, the city would be required to have an insurance uh, policy on that crossing. They agreed to spend $3 million over the next six years for crossing improvements in the city. 
um, subject to the police, to the railroad and the city agreeing on what crossings to be improved. The, it also includes that the crossing at Cottle will be closed as part of this agreement. Um, it is anticipated that the Maple uh, Road opening uh, will be opened and the Cottle crossing will be closed on November the 12th. There is signage up around that site now along Cottle so people will know that it's been closed. Um, the next work session would be November the 16th, uh, five o'clock talk about mixed use and, and residential uses on the comprehensive land use plan. The um, consultant, which is A3 Studios, will be here on March the 15th and 16th to start discussion, or the 16th and 7th, whatever, Tuesday and Wednesday. Is the 15th, the 16th is a Tuesday? March. I mean, November, I'm sorry. Okay. It seems to me like it should be March, not November. No, no, it, it's November, sorry. It's been a crazy couple of weeks. Already, yeah, I'm jumping to spring break. Um, we also need to talk about election of officers at the work session because we need to uh, to get that in line. We'll know who's up for reappointment by that time. And the only other note that we have, and do we want to try to have a Christmas get together? And our suggestion is we look at the new American. All American. All American uh, Steakhouse and see if we can do that. Yeah, they do. Uh, do we have a preference on dates or can we just kind of figure out when we can get it and we'll send you out a, a doodle poll or something to say how many can make it on which which date if we can find out with that works for me and with that i have nothing else is there right. any day of the week 